bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number seven at Keeneland on Future Stars Friday, day one of the Breeders' Cup program at Keeneland this weekend. It's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Championship honors likely to be decided in this race. $2 million is the purse. We're going a mile and a 16th. Remember, a short stretch at Keeneland at a mile and a 16th. Let's take a look at this field. Trainer Todd Pletcher represented with two in here. He's got the grade one winner, Chocolate Gelato, who will be trying two turns for the first time, and he has a newcomer to the barn, Atomically, who did win around a two-turn mile in a 16th and did so very impressively against Florida Breds at Gulfstream. Yeah, his, the newcomer in the Pletcher barn has looked pretty good so far. This is a pretty significant step up in class for her. I think he, Pletcher probably has the horse to beat Dan with the 10 chocolate gelato. Um, she does have to stretch out around two turns, though, for the first time. Curious as to your thoughts on the time form U.S. pace projector. I tend to agree with the red bar situation. I think this pace has to be fast. I wonder if You're My Girl, the two, is faster than the nine grand love. Both of them are very quick. I have a feeling Chocolate Gelato is going to try to raid out of it a bit, maybe sit third or fourth, but not be too close to the pace. Is Wonder Wheel going to try front running tactics again? I mean, maybe they'll try it. I didn't think she was fast enough to make the lead this time. I thought more than anything else, she just got a great ride last time um, when just holding on over course and distance, though. I, I'm with you. I kind of feel like Grand Love, the nine, might be fastest early in here, Dan. Um, we'll see. I, the Time Form US didn't have her most recent start, the Pocahontas, um, you know, with the fractions color-coded red, but I thought that was a pretty strong pace. It certainly seems so. The closers did very well in that race. Let's start things off with the number one Vegas Magic, who, as you saw on the pace projector, would benefit from a fast pace up front. She drew inside in this two-turn test. Her first try around two turns. She won the grade two Sorrento at a big price from off the pace. Two starts back. Last time out, no match for Ann. Tell me no lies and must face that one once again. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, to me, she doesn't really have the race that makes her a serious contender in here, even though she won the first three starts of her career, including a grade two, Dan, they, it felt like they really tested her most recently for the first time. And she just didn't really do anything in that race. The number two, you're my girl should be a factor in here. A New York bred trained by John Terranova who ran away and hid from fellow state breads in her career debut going six furlongs at Saratoga. They threw her to the wolves in the frisette second time out, stretching her out in distance, very wet track. She showed good speed. She hung in there to be second. Uh, she's the inside of the speeds. Whether she's on the lead or sitting second, she should be right in the thick of things when they turn into the short stretch. Oh, yeah, I feel like they're going to they have to come out of there running, whether she's on the lead or not. I guess it, that depends on how fast they go. But I think she'll, they'll come out of there running, looking for the front in this race. Um, I personally can't knock either of her first two starts. She was very impressive winning uh, her debut at Saratoga. And I thought her first set was all in all a pretty solid effort. I didn't feel like there was any point throughout the stretch there, even though chocolate gelato never really put her away. I, I never really felt like that was a, a spot where you're my girl was going to come back and beat her. I still thought she ran fine. The only three-time winner in the field comes from the West Coast. It's the number three. And tell me no lies. She won the Del Mar debutante, a grade one going seven eighths. Then she successfully stretched out to this two-turn distance. In this race, the chandelier at the great race place on October the 8th. She stumbled a little bit coming out of the gate, Mike. But I liked what Vasquez did. Kind of sent her up, got her relaxed in a nice spot behind the speeds and wore them down. The only concern is that she's a little bit slow on paper. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I like everything else about her, though, Dan. I like all of her wins. I like this win. Um, although, you know, she had a, a competitive pace in front of her. I thought all in all she got a perfect trip despite stumbling at the start there. Um, but she might get another quick pace in front of her here. She's already shown that she can sit and make a run at horses through the stretch. And that's a big advantage in this race. Sabra Tuff has earned a graded stakes placing. That was three starts back in the Adirondack going six and a half. She's been beaten by several of these horses, however. Last time out in the Alcibiades, if you want to say post 13 is no great shakes going a mile in the 16th at Keeneland, fine. And she did pass some horses in the stretch, but other horses had more trouble, I thought. Yeah, me too. Um, she didn't have a huge excuse in there. Um, just sort of ran her typical race down. I, I'm actually a fan of hers. I think she's probably a little bit underrated. I still don't like her in this race. 
Wonder Wheel beat three of these, including Sabra Tough in the Alcibiades, the local prep over this track, over this distance. Let's watch her performance. Wonder Wheel showed good speed, set a legitimate pace, opened up at just the right time, turning into this short stretch. You're going to see Raging C, who's down inside here, try to bull her way out to get a run. Chop Chop is going to be coming on the outside, and Wonder Wheel just keeps finding just a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, she's going to narrowly hold on at the end here. Doesn't finish it off that strongly, but um, everything else she did was, you know, I guess what you would want to see first time around two turns. You know, that being said, Dan, it's not the Elsabide is, I didn't think it was that strong of a race overall. And at the end of the day, to me, this horse had all the best of it with a great ride from Tyler Gaffleon. Alma Rosa is up next, the number six. She's coming off of a stakes win at Delaware Park, going two turns over Muddy Going. Here's the white clay creek stakes on October the 14th. It was not the strongest field in the world. Alma Rosa is making a, her move right now to get up close to the leader who's getting tired, and she does what she has to do. She draws away to win. This is a giant step up in class. She'll have to do it perhaps on fast ground. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's a, she's just in really, really tough here, stepping way up in class without a figure to lean on, um, just facing way better horses. I just thought she was really hard to make a case for. She's a huge price if you want to throw her in. If I had to take a horse from the Alcibiades, maybe it would be Chop Chop. The number seven, Joel Rosario for Brad Cox. This horse won her first two starts on turf. They ran her on dirt confidently. She didn't break very well. She was able to save ground. I thought she was kind of in behind a dullard going into the first turn on the back stretch and had to drop back inside, got to the outside and was running on late. A fast pace really helps her. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I feel like if I was going to take somebody out of the Alcibiades, I'd probably take her too. Um, I just don't know if I want anyone out of that race, Dan. That being said, I liked her first two starts on turf, and I thought she ran fine last time. Atomically, first time for Todd Pletcher after two dominating wins down in South Florida. The second one, the My Dear Girl for Florida Breads, going a mile in a 16th where she just brushed and she crushed. Yeah, I, I like all three of her starts then. The, the career debut was way too short for me. Um, I still thought she ran pretty well in there. Her last two, her two, her two starts since then have been really strong, I think. The maiden win going seventh, she just took no prisoners on the lead that day. She broke alertly. They went straight to the lead. They didn't really rate it in there, and she buried that field. And I, I really liked her win on the stretch out last time, just rating, staying wide all the way around the track, um, but just staying on very strongly through the stretch. Considering she has the same last buyer speed figure as Chocolate Gelato, 12 to 1 on the morning line. Seems like value indeed. Grand Love is the number nine. She was a very impressive debut winner at Saratoga sprinting for Steve Asmussen. She showed high speed in that race, and she really never gave the other horses a chance. We were looking forward to see what she could do second time out in the Pocahontas. She was sent out of there. Like you, I thought the pace was fast, and she held up okay to be third. The buyer decreased, but we know she can run fast. She did so in her debut. Yeah, it's all a question of whether she can, um, you know, just sort of rate a little bit because in her first two starts, it really it didn't look like she's the kind of filly you want to be taking a hold of. Um, she doesn't seem like a very kind filly to rate uh, in that most recent start. They just went to the front and um, I thought she was moving right along on the lead in that race, Dan, and just couldn't really fight the horses off when they came for her in the stretch. She just didn't have anything left. Um, she's going to have to settle way better than that if she's going to win this race. All right, Ortiz takes them out on the 10. Chocolate gelato for Todd Pletcher. This horse really benefited from the debut experience. She won her second start sprinting at Saratoga by almost 10 lengths with a hefty 92 buyer speed figure. And then she handled the stretch out to a one-turn mile and a very sloppy track with a professional performance in the frisette. This race, she was kind of in between horses uh, on the uh, back stretch and into the turn. She gets to the outside here. She's going to go by You're My Girl. I thought the third finisher, Leave no trace ran a sneaky good race as well but i think the best way to describe chocolate gelato is professional she's not sexy she doesn't have a lot of sizzle she knows what she's doing though i'll agree with all that stuff um i, I liked this performance from her i know it wasn't you know a dominating win but i liked that after just going right to the front the breaker made it in fast time they just took her back last time they let her sit behind horses and then came up on the outside. And I know, like, I think we're going to see a lot of horses these next two days at the Breeders' Cup, Dan, coming out of the preps in New York. They don't, they looks like they didn't run great in their prep races, but 
I'm going to be forgiving for a lot of those horses because we caught very, very bad weather and very wet tracks on those two uh, prep days. And, and I think it made some horses maybe look a little bit worse than they actually are. American Rockette, the little sibling to Frank's Rockette, who we'll see on Saturday in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, she won her debut in an off-turf race at Saratoga, coming from way off of the pace. And that's her running style right now. She doesn't have a lot of early speed. Uh, she was no match for Chocolate Gelato in the Frizzette. I think the wet track excuse is a viable excuse, and she's going to get a fast pace in here. The question is, is it too much too soon? I think it might be. Yeah, and how far does she want to go? I think that's the major question that I have, Dan. To me, she's got that look like of a closing sprinter. Um, I, I know that the debut was a race scheduled for turf and rained off, but she she was pretty good winning that race with a big finish. And I would just say, I know that she wound up fourth in the spinaway. She might have been best in that race. Totally blew the start, bolted to the outside rail, and made a huge run to only get beat about three lengths in there. I mean, I think she's good. I just don't know if she wants to go this far. Shoplifter is up next. She won one of those uh, maiden auction maiden special weights, a restricted race to Churchill Downs in her second lifetime start, but she really improved first time around two turns. She finished second in the Pocahontas, finishing ahead of Grand Love. The fifth place finisher came back to win a first level allowance by open lengths at Keeneland with a 70 buyer speed figure, and she seems tactical. She just needs to continue that buyer progression because right now it's light. Yeah, exactly. She did improve, though, around two turns for the first time in the Pocahontas because she was relatively close to what I thought was a pretty solid pace in there while the winner just sat at the back and came with a run on the outside. I thought she ran an OK second in there, but I think she has to improve again. Leave No Trace is the number 13, very likable debut winner at Saratoga against Maiden Auction Company. Came right back to win the spin away in her second lifetime start at a big price, showed good tactical speed in that race. And I thought she ran an underrated third in the frisette. She kind of was really antsy in the gate. And then she broke inward terribly from the inside post and conceded some position, stuck down inside, turning into the stretch, had to get to the outside, all over a sloppy track, a good experience builder for a filly that likes to be close to the pace. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think she was done any favors by drawing as far outside as she did. Dan, post 13 gives her a lot to overcome, um, especially if this pace winds up being fast. Um, but other other than that, I just feel like she's like a really underrated horse. She doesn't have any fast figures on her card, but she's run well in all three of her starts. And I think she can handle the added ground. Raging sea breaks from post 14, and that's no bargain either. She was a likable debut winner going a demanding debut distance. Seven-eighths of a mile at Saratoga was a nice professional performance. Now she got a trip. She was tracking in between horses. The hole opened up, and she shot on through. She was game to win. We both liked her in the Alcibiades, and as we saw in the replay, she was kind of in a bit tight turning into the upper stretch. She had to bull her way out, and she was running on late. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. I still felt like overall um, she got a great trip in the Alcibiades and maybe just sort of wound up in tight through the stretch because she didn't really accelerate when it was time to do so. Um, you know, I don't know, Dan. I, I thought her debut was was good. I was a little concerned about how weak the race has been since then. Um, I thought she ran fine last time, but I didn't necessarily want to go back to her here, especially from post-14. Championship honors could be on the line in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Let's go with our top picks. We have the same exact, a different order. It's Pletcher's World. We're living with it. Uh, we're living in it, and you're going with uh, Atomically at a better price. Yeah, I think this horse should be a, a fair price in here. I just like her last two wins quite a bit. And I'm not, you know, way against Chocolate Gelato, but that horse still has to stretch out. I mean, she has a lot of stamina on the bottom of her pedigree, but she's by more of a sprint sire. I don't know. I thought this race was fairly wide open. Yeah, she's got to do it around two turns. Got to prove that she can do it on a fast track around two turns. But she's very professional. She's very likable. I wonder how strong this group is right now, which is why I used Atomically prominently in my selections. I think a new face is a good thing in this division. And again, you can't beat the price that you're getting on the morning line. Mike's going 8 10 3 2. I'm going 10 8 2 5. It's the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies on Future Stars Friday at the Breeders' Cup at Keeneland. Good luck.